Amrita Pritam listened the 31st of August 1919 to the 31st of October 2005 was an Indian novelist, essayist and poet who wrote in Punjabi and Hindi. She is considered the first prominent woman Punjabi poet, novelist and essayist and the leading 20th century poet of the Punjabi language who is equally loved on both sides of the India-Pakistan border. With a career spanning over six decades, she produced over 100 books of poetry, fiction, biographies, essays, a collection of Punjabi folk songs, and an autobiography that were translated into several Indian and foreign languages. She is most remembered for her poignant poem, Ajj Akan Waris Shah Nu. Today I invoke Waris Shah. Ode to Waris Shah. An elegy to the 18th century Punjabi poet, an expression of her anguish over massacres during the partition of India. As a novelist, her most noted work was Panjar the Skeleton 1950, in which she created her memorable character, Puro, an epitome of violence against women, loss of humanity and ultimate surrender to existential fate. The novel was made into an award-winning film, Panjar in 2003, when the former British India was partitioned into the independent states of India and Pakistan in 1947, she migrated from Lahore, to India, though she remained equally popular in Pakistan throughout her life, as compared to her contemporaries like Mohan Singh and Shiv Kumar Batalvi. Known as the most important voice for the women in Punjabi literature, in 1956, she became the first woman to win the Sahitya Akademi Award for her magnum opus, a long poem, Sunahadi Messages. Later she received the Bharatiya Jnanpith, one of India's highest literary awards, in 1982 for Kagas Te Canvas The Paper and the Canvas. The Padma Shri came her way in 1969 and finally, Padma Vibhushan, India's second highest civilian award, in 2004, and in the same year she was honoured with India's highest literary award, given by the Sahitya Akademi India's Academy of Letters, the Sahitya Akademi Fellowship given to the Immortals of Literature for lifetime achievement. Biography <inaudible> 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 Topic. Background Amrita Pritam was born as Amrit Kaur in 1919 in Gujranwala, Punjab, in present-day Pakistan, the only child of Raj Bibi, who was a school teacher and Kartar Singh Hitkari, who was a poet, a scholar of Braj Basha, and the editor edited a literary journal. Besides this, he was a prakarik, a preacher of the Sikh faith. Amrita's mother died when she was eleven. Soon after, she and her father moved to Lahore, where she lived till her migration to India in 1947. Confronting adult responsibilities, and besieged by loneliness following her mother's death, she began to write at an early age. Her first anthology of poems, Amrit Laran Immortal Waves, was published in 1936, at age 16, the year she married Pritam Singh, an editor to whom she was engaged in early childhood, and changed her name from Amrita Kaur to Amrita Pritam. Half a dozen collections of poems were to follow between 1936 and 1943. Though she began her journey as romantic poet, soon she shifted gears, and became part of the progressive writer's movement and its effect was seen in her collection, Lok Pied People's Anguish 1944, which openly criticized the war-torn economy, after the Bengal famine of 1943. She was also involved in social work to certain extent and participated in such activities wholeheartedly, after independence when social activist Guru Radha Kashan took the initiative to bring the first Janda Library in Delhi, which was inaugurated by Balraj Sani and Aruna Asaf Ali and contributed to the occasion accordingly. This study centre Kum Library is still running at Clock Tower, Delhi. She also worked at Lahore Radio Station for a while, before the partition of India renowned theatre person and the director of the immortal partition movie Garam Hava, M. S. Sathiu paid a theatrical tribute to her through the rare theatrical performance Ek the Amrita. <laughs> partition of British India Some one million people, Muslims, Hindus and Sikhs died from communal violence that followed the partition of British India in 1947, and left Amrita Pritam a Punjabi refugee at age 28, when she left Lahore and moved to New Delhi. Subsequently, in 1948, while she was pregnant with her son, and travelling from Dehradun to Delhi, she expressed anguish on a piece of paper as the poem, Ajj Akan Waris Shah Nu, 
I ask Waris Shah today, this poem was to later immortalize her and become the most poignant reminder of the horrors of partition. The poem addressed to the Sufi poet Waris Shah, author of the tragic saga of Heer and Ranja and with whom she shares her birthplace, Amrita Pritam worked until 1961 in the Punjabi service of All India Radio, Delhi. After her divorce in 1960, her work became more clearly feminist. Many of her stories and poems drew on the unhappy experience of her marriage. A number of her works have been translated into English, French, Danish, Japanese, Mandarin and other languages from Punjabi and Urdu, including her autobiographical works Black Rose and Rasidi Ticket Revenue Stamp. The first of Amrita Pritam's books to be filmed was Dardi Sagar Te Sipian, as Kadambari 1965, followed by Anna Di Kahani, as Daku Dekoit, 1976, directed by Basu Bhattacharya. Her novel Punjar the Skeleton, 1970, narrates the story of partition riots along with the crisis of women who suffered during the times. It was made into an award-winning Hindi movie by Chandra Prakash Dwivedi, because of its humanism. Amrita Ji has portrayed the suffering of people of both the countries. Punjar was shot in a border region of Rajasthan and in Punjab. She edited, Nagmami a monthly literary magazine in Punjabi for several years, which she ran together with Imraz, for 33 years, though after partition she wrote prolifically in Hindi as well. Later in life, she turned to Osho and wrote introductions for several books of Osho, including Ek Ankar Satnam, and also started writing on spiritual themes and dreams, producing works like Kal Chetna Time Consciousness and Agyat Khandi Mantran Call of the Unknown. She had also published autobiographies titled Kala Gulab Black Rose 1968, Rasidi Ticket The Revenue Stamp 1976 and Aksharan K. Sayi Shadows of Words. Topic: <laughs> Acclaim. Amrita is the first recipient of Punjab Ratan Award conferred upon her by Punjab Chief Minister Capt. Amarinder Singh. She is first woman recipient of the Sahitya Akademi Award in 1956 for Sunhedi, poetic diminutive of the word Sunehe i.e., messages. Amrita Pritam received the Bhartiya Jnanpith Award, India's highest literary award, in 1982 for Kagai Te Canvas, paper and canvas. She received the Padma Shri 1969 and Padma Vibhushan, India's second highest civilian award, and Sahitya Akademi Fellowship, India's highest literary award, also in 2004. She received D.Lit. honorary degrees, from many universities including, Delhi University 1973, Jubalpur University 1973, and Vishwa Bharati 1987. She also received International Vapesarov Award from the Republic of Bulgaria 1979, and degree of Officer Dens, Ordre des Arts et des Lettres by the French government 1987. She was nominated as a member of Raja Sabha 1986-92. Towards the end of her life, she was awarded by Pakistan's Punjabi Academy, to which she had remarked, Bade Dino Baad Mir Make Ko Mary Yad Aayi, My Motherland Has Remembered Me After a Long Time, and also Punjabi Poets of Pakistan, sent her a chatter, from the tombs of Waris Shah, and fellow Sufi mystic poets Buell Shah and Sultan Bahu. Topic. Personal life In 1935, Amrita married Pritam Singh, son of a leading hosiery merchant of Lahore's Anarkali Bazaar. In 1960, Amrita Pritam left her husband. She is also said to have an unrequited affection for poet Sahir Ludianvi. The story of this love is depicted in her autobiography, Rasidi Ticket Revenue Stamp. When another woman, singer Sudha Malhotra came into Sahir's life, Amrita found solace in the companionship of the renowned artist and writer Imraz. She spent the last 40 years of her life with Imraz, who also designed most of her book covers and made her the subject of his several paintings. Their life together is also the subject of a book, Amrita Imraz, a love story. She died in her sleep on 31 October 2005 at the age of 86 in New Delhi, after a long illness. She was survived by her partner Imraz, daughter Kandala, son Navraj Quatra, daughter-in-law Alka, and her grandchildren, Taurus, Noor, Aman and Shilpi. Navraj Quatra was killed in 2012. Topic: Legacy. 
In 2007, an audio album titled, Amrita Recited by Gulzar was released by noted lyricist Gulzar, with poems of Amrita Pritam recited by him. A film on her life is also on the anvil. Bibliography <inaudible> 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 In her career spanning over six decades, she penned 28 novels, 18 anthologies of prose, five short stories and 16 miscellaneous prose volumes. Novel Pinjar Dr. Dev Kor Kagas, Unches Din Darty, Sagar Aur Sepian Rang Ka Pata Dili Ki Galian Tarawan Siraj Yatri Jilavatan Hardit Ka Zindaganama Autobiography Black Rose 1968 Rossidi Ticket 1976 Shadows of Words 2004 Short Stories Kahanian Jo Kahanian Nahi Kahanian K Angan Mine Stench of Karasena Poetry Anthologies Amrit Laren Immortal Waves 1936 Jinda Jiwan The Exuberant Life 1939 Trell Dok Pool 1942 O Jitan Valia, 1942. Badlam de Lali, 1943. Sanj de Lali, 1943. Lok Pira, The People's Anguish, 1944. Pathar Giti, The Pebbles, 1946. Punjab D. Awas, 1952. Sunahadi, Messages, 1955. Sahitya Akademi Award. Ashoka Chetty, 1957. Kasturi 1957 Nagmami 1964 Ik Anita 1964 Chak Nambar Chatty 1964 Uninja Din 49 days 1979 Kagaz Te Canvas 1981 Bartia Jainanpith Chuni Huyi Kavitayan Ek Bata Literary Journal Nagmami Poetry Monthly <laughs> <laughs>